Well, thank you very much for inviting me to speak today. Uh, my name is Adam Fultzer. I'm a senior software engineer at Fastly and part of the office of the CTO. We're a small research team focusing on what is coming next, both for Fastly's Edge Cloud Network and for the internet more broadly. My own background is in programming language theory and design, and I have specifically done a lot of my research with statically typed functional programming languages like Haskell and TypeScript. Lately, I have done more work with low-level systems like embedded microcontrollers, and so I've been using Rust for its combination of low-level control and rich type system. So today, I am excited to introduce you to Lucid, a suite of tools that we've built to do lightweight software isolation, mostly using Rust. Lucid is designed to take WebAssembly beyond the browser and bring faster, safer execution to Fastly's Edge Cloud. At the end of March, we finally released Lucid as open source and under a permissive license so anyone can use it. So what is Lucid? Well, it's actually a combination of several tools. First of all, Lucid is a compiler. It takes WebAssembly as input and produces native x86-64 machine code. Second, Lucid is a runtime environment. A primary focus of Lucid is on the safety of programs and the isolation of programs from one another. The code it produces includes metadata, which amounts to something like a contract between the program and the runtime environment. Essentially, this contract says that this code is safe to run, assuming that you run it in an environment that matches these requirements. These requirements include the amount of memory uh, for the stack and the heap, bounds checking for memory accesses, and the functions to be imported from the environment. Lucid is also a suite of tools for working with WebAssembly and with Lucid's native machine code artifacts. These tools are still rather early and fragile, but our goal is to have a full suite of profilers, debugger integrations, and so on. Today, though, these tools are not very refined, still in development. So to start from the beginning, what is WebAssembly and why would we be interested in it for Fastly's Edge Cloud platform? WebAssembly is a low-level language for compilers to target when they want to run performance-critical code within a web browser. Before WebAssembly, there was Asm.js, a subset of JavaScript that had just enough static type information to let browsers compile it into very fast code. Eventually, Asm.js code became so fast in web browsers that the time it took to actually download and parse the JavaScript was one of the biggest performance bottlenecks for running an Asm.js program. The community created WebAssembly to solve this bottleneck by making WebAssembly as a compact binary format that can begin compiling even before the complete WebAssembly file is downloaded. And because WebAssembly is meant to run in the browser, security and sandboxing was a critical part of the design from the very beginning. And this is why we chose WebAssembly. The same sandboxing principles that make WebAssembly safe to run in the browser turn out to also make it safer in a server or serverless environment. WebAssembly gives us confidence that each program runs in isolation without introducing the overhead of a virtual machine a container, or even a Linux process. So, how does it work? Well, right now, WebAssembly is mostly targeted by statically typed languages with no garbage collection. The most mature of these language backends are for C, C++, Rust, and TypeScript. There are lots of others in various phases of development, uh, such as backends for Go and for Swift, but we can do quite a bit already with just these four languages. So the first step in our story is taking the programs written in these languages and compiling them into WebAssembly. And Lucid doesn't actually do this part. Instead, you use the language's compiler, such as Clang or Rust-C, to compile to WebAssembly. These languages all have somewhat different ways of compiling to WebAssembly. Uh, for example, in TypeScript, 
we actually use a different compiler called AssemblyScript, which uses the binary and tool chain under the hood. Clang and Rust-C both use LLVM, but they each use it somewhat differently, particularly when linking modules together. But what all of these have in common is that you get a WebAssembly module out the other end. Another thing tying some of these languages together is the new WebAssembly System Interface, or WASI for short. We've been collaborating with Mozilla on WASI, and it recently went public alongside Lucid's open source introduction. WASI defines a set of functions that WebAssembly modules can expect to import from their environment. Now, if you've tried to use WebAssembly in the past, you've probably run into the problem where each compiler has different ideas about what interface it expects uh, to run the programs in and interact with the outside world. WASI is very exciting because it gives all of these compilers a standard interface to target instead of being tied to just one particular runtime environment. And because WASI is closely related and inspired by POSIX, many simple command line applications just work when you compile them for WASI. But to get back to our main story, we now have our WebAssembly module, so what do we do with it? In principle, you should be able to run the WebAssembly code in any environment that fulfills the contract expected by the module running on the client and server possibilities, but we can also think of more environments, such as edge computing, that fall in between. Now, of course, until now, uh, you almost certainly would just deploy your WebAssembly module to uh, a web browser. There just weren't other options. And by the way, we should take a moment to appreciate just how awesome it is that we can deploy in web browsers like this. All the major browsers have managed to collaborate well enough over the past few years to build and deploy an entirely new runtime environment for these applications across all of their platforms. And this is amazing, particularly if you remember uh, the, the days of the browser wars, ActiveX, and incompatible plugins. Uh, and so building on all the, the shoulders of that effort, Lucid is our answer for running WebAssembly modules outside of the browser. At the highest level, the process looks like this. Lucid takes a WebAssembly module and produces a native artifact. The result of running the Lucid compiler is an ELF or Mako object file containing the compiled native code. Now, Lucid is an ahead of time compiler rather than a just in time compiler, like those included in most browsers. And I'll explain why we haven't added just-in-time compilation when we talk about the runtime. OK. So Lucid C is the compiler side of Lucid. Internally, it has a bunch of different parts. Uh, we have the parser, uh, which walks through the structure of the WebAssembly module and builds up internal data structures representing its different components. These structures then go into the verifier, which is a pretty crucial part of this whole thing when it comes to the safety of our programs. We need to be very certain that what we're going to compile into native code is actually a valid WebAssembly module. Otherwise, we don't get the safety properties that are guaranteed to make WebAssembly safe to run in a sandbox. So assuming all is well in the verifier, uh, the structures uh, that we've verified then flow into the translator, which outputs a different intermediate representation, or IR, that is more suitable for code generation. If you're not familiar with IRs, the idea is that they're lower level languages that let you represent the same program that you're compiling, but with extra features that make it easier to do things like run optimization passes, select native instructions, or reason about what machine registers a program needs. So once we've translated the IR, it flows into the CodeGen system, which I'll dive into more detail on shortly. And finally, we get the output of the native code generator, and we package it up and along with the metadata needed to maintain those safety properties in our program, send all of that into the artifact that we output. 
OK, so what happens inside this code generator? The code generator is actually a separate project called CraneLift. And to be honest, CraneLift does most of the heavy lifting in this process. It was started and is primarily maintained by a small group of developers and our friends at Mozilla. Fastly has also been contributing to CraneLift, and we really can't say enough good things about it. Uh, building a project like Lucid in the time that we did and reaching the level of performance we have just would have been impossible without CraneLift. And to give you some idea of how great it is, CraneLift is not only the ahead of time compiler that we use in Lucid, but it is also planned to be the next just-in-time code generator used in Firefox. And it is very exciting to be sharing code on a project with such talented engineers who are working on you know, such an important part of the internet. So to dive a bit deeper into CraneLift. CraneLift also has a verifier. Uh, but this time, it's to verify CraneLift's IR, not WebAssembly. And this step makes sure that the IR that we translated from WebAssembly is actually valid. And once it's verified, we run the first set of optimization passes on it. And these are optimization passes that work on machine-independent IR, meaning that we don't need to actually know what kind of native code we're producing in order to improve performance. And the examples of this are things like constant folding, arithmetic simplification, branch collapsing, and so on. Uh, these are the basic blocks that go into building code optimizations. Once we're satisfied, the optimized IR then goes into, oops, goes into the legalizer. Uh, which doesn't have the most exciting name, but this is the step where native machine code is actually generated. We take the IR that we're working with and we, quote, legalize it for a particular processor. Uh, at this point, each of the instructions in the IR has a one-to-one -one correspondence with a native machine code instruction. So it's no longer machine independent. And now that we've legalized the code, we can run the post-optimization process, which tends to be optimization passes targeted toward specific architectures. For example, x86-64 has a lot of different ways to load and store data in memory, but the corresponding WebAssembly instructions are actually much simpler. So often what we can do is combine multiple WebAssembly instructions into a single x86-64 instruction in this post-opt phase. OK, we're almost there. Once we're satisfied with the optimization results, uh, we run the register allocator, which takes all of the abstract symbolic variables that we've been working with to this point and uh, actually assigns them into the machine registers in the processor or spills them onto the stack. And finally, we end up in the branch relaxation phase. Uh, and I'm not going to go into the details of this one, but it actually lays out where the program ends up in memory. So if anyone ever tells you that compilers are composed only of lexing, parsing, and cogen, just show them this picture, uh, because it turns out that modern compilers are very complex pieces of software. And despite all that complexity, we're still not quite done yet. That's just the compilation side of Lucid. There is also the runtime. And the runtime is where most of the rest of the complexity, interesting decisions, and trade-offs are made in Lucid. It is also very close to my heart, uh, because my first task uh, after I joined Fastly was to take the initial runtime prototype, which was written in C, and port it into Rust. And as an aside, um, using, Rust, <coughs> using Rust has been wonderful. Uh, it has made us much more confident that the runtime system is correct. Uh, because of the additional safety properties that Rust provides, very similar to what Felix was uh, just speaking about with TypeScript. It is also proven to be much better for developer productivity, as we can add new features and collaborate on the code with much more confidence that the Rust compiler will catch any missed assumptions or accidental unsafety. Again, I'm very grateful to Felix for introducing these concepts already. 
Anyway, the runtime is critical to how we want to use Lucid as the close relationship between Lucid's compiler and runtime is what makes the performance and particularly the startup time less than 50 microseconds for a Lucid instance, uh, what makes that possible. And now because we chose ahead of time rather than just in time compilation, most of the work to make the generated code fast uh, can be done before we need to actually run it, uh, which helps us keep those startup times low. Again, 50 microseconds. Uh, so the artifact produced by the Lucid compiler doesn't just contain code. It also contains a bunch of metadata about the program, including, again, the contract between the compiler and the runtime. And the contract says, I, the compiler, claim that this code is safe to run as long as you, the runtime, set up the environment according to these specifications. And this may change as development goes on, but most of what the contract says today is about the types of functions both in the environment and in the program, and about the memory layout. The generated code makes certain assumptions about, for example, where global variables are stored, how large the heap can be, how much guard memory follows the heap, where the stacks are, and so on. And depending on how much memory space is available, the compiler can actually pre-compute some of the results of the safety checks, such as memory and array bounds checks, and safely remove them from the compiled program, which reduces the performance overhead of having those extra checks. And because this important, or because this layout is uh, so important for our safety properties to hold, uh, a big part of the runtime's job is actually performing this layout correctly. And this is much more challenging uh, than it may seem, uh, because Lucid is specifically built for highly concurrent workloads. We designed it to handle thousands or even tens of thousands of these sandboxes running all at once in the same process. And so essentially, the Lucid runtime ends up handling many of the jobs that we ordinarily uh, delegate to the operating system. Uh, laying out memory, enforcing separation between these processes, and isolating faults. And in a blog post this week, uh, I went into much more detail on the life cycle of a Lucid instance, including performance measurements of each step along the way. And I'll walk you through at a high level now, but I encourage you to check out the post if you want to know more about how we make this work at Fastly's scale. And so the core idea is that the Lucid runtime allocates memory all at once for all of the instances it might need to run, even if they're not yet ready to run. Then, when we want to create a new instance for a sandbox, all we have to do is fill in one of the slots that we've already created, rather than having to ask the operating system for more memory. We then use some handwritten assembly to make sure that switching uh, from the host context into the WebAssembly guest context is extremely fast. Finally, when the program is done, we just return its slot to the runtime, keeping those resources free for creating more sandboxes in the future. All right, so now I'm gonna introduce you to Terrarium, the demonstration service we built to first share Lucid with the world as a part of Fastly Labs. It lets anyone upload their own programs in C, Rust, TypeScript, or even pure WebAssembly, and then runs that program as a web service. So, let's see it in action. All right, so the front end uh, to Terrarium is a modified version of the amazing WebAssembly Studio project that lets you easily play with WebAssembly in the browser. In Terrarium, though, the programs run on a cloud server instead of in the browser. We start by loading up an example project, and this example is a Terrarium service that can resize and sharpen a JPEG image on the fly in response to requests. The service is implemented in C and actually includes the C JPEG library to use for encoding the images. The whole library gets compiled into WebAssembly along with our program. 
And down here in our program, we have the run function, which is the entry point that gets called when the server handles a request. I won't go into all the details here, but you can see that it starts with some default HTML to return as a help page. And further down, it decompresses the JPEG data, applies the requested transformations to the image, and recompresses the JPEG to send back to the client. It even uses a simple key value store provided by Terrarium in order to cache the results of image transformations for future uh, requests. All right, so now we click the build and deploy button. Uh, and first, our server infrastructure generates a new unique name for the uh, for the service. Uh, the sources get uploaded uh, to Terrarium, and uh, then we um, compile the project into WebAssembly. Uh, in this case, we use Clang because it's a C project. Uh, we pass the WebAssembly to Lucid, which compiles it into native code. And finally, Terrarium starts a web server and deploys the native code and the Lucid runtime. All right, and if we click this URL, what we get back is actually the help page that we saw in the run function. And the links below uh, all send another request to the WebAssembly program with different image parameters. So the second, let's see. Ah. There we go. And so this uh, second image is actually a sharpened version of the first image, but it's probably too hard to see on the projector. Uh, but we can see that the third link scales and sharpens the image. And for each of these requests, the original image is loaded, the image processing routines are run, and the result is returned to the client, all by the WebAssembly that's running inside of Lucid. Ah, Andrew warned me about this. Nope. Sorry. Gomen nasai. Hi. Uh, so, as we can see in our example, uh, the Terrarium program can read the method, headers, and body of the incoming request, and then write uh, the body back as a response. Uh, but when I introduced WebAssembly, one of the selling points I mentioned was how, assembly pro how WebAssembly keeps programs isolated from each other. So, how can a Terrarium program be interacting with the outside world like this? Well, it turns out that WebAssembly gives us isolation, but also controlled ways to get through that isolation. I've mentioned that WebAssembly programs specify the functions that they expect to be able to import from the environment, uh, but the arguments to these functions are then what we use to expose data from inside the sandbox to the host process running the Lucid runtime. And likewise, the host process is free to move data back into the sandbox, but crucially, it is the host that controls this movement, not the potentially untrusted program running inside the sandbox. So, by designing the right set of imported functions, 
we can give terrarium programs exactly the functions that they need to do their job and nothing more. And specifically in terrarium, we have a function that gets the headers from the incoming request and another function that sets the headers of the outgoing response. Likewise, we have a function that sets the body of the outgoing response, which is how we were able to see that lovely cat. The point is that everything a WebAssembly program does with the outside world must go through one of these functions that we control. If it tries to do anything else, Lucid will refuse to compile it. This makes things much easier when we're trying to make sure that our programs are secure. For example, Terrarium programs can make HTTP requests to other hosts while servicing a request, which is the kind of thing that you might do if you're writing a proxy or an API facade. But it's also the kind of thing that you might do if you wanted to use Terrarium to launch a DDoS attack. Because we explicitly provide the Terrarium program with the function it uses to make HTTP requests, we can add rate limiting to that function and make it strip out any potentially malicious headers from the outgoing requests. And because we haven't provided the, any other functions that can make HTTP requests, we can be confident that none of our terrarium guests can use the request API to launch a DDoS attack. So while I hope I've convinced you that Lucid is a cool piece of technology, it would certainly be reasonable to ask why we bothered to do all of this in the first place. It's been a huge project that took a lot of time and a lot of effort. And even for me, someone who only recently started to work on internet-related research, it seems strange that a CDN would take on a project like this. And the answer is that Fastly has always been providing edge computing capabilities to our customers. However, we also deeply care about the performance and the safety of that edge computing. And so, up until now, these edge computing capabilities have been intentionally limited. We haven't been able to provide the kinds of capabilities that we really wanted to because we couldn't do it both safely and at Fastly's scale. So, a couple years ago, my colleagues started looking at this problem once again but there wasn't an existing technology out there that could provide both the safety and performance guarantees that we wanted. So we set out to build it ourselves. And two years later, we've open sourced that work as Lucid. There is still quite a bit that's uh, to come. We want Lucid to become the easiest, uh, safest, and fastest way to run WebAssembly anywhere. And so we're dedicated to making sure that it does what people need and in the environments where they need it. Uh, for example, we recently added support for Mac OS, and Windows support is also in the roadmap. And similarly, Lucid only generates x86-64 code today because we only run Intel processors at Fastly, but we'll eventually need to support others to meet the community needs. And if you haven't checked out Lucid, played with Terrarium, or used WebAssembly at all, I hope this talk has inspired you to do so. And if you have, I hope this talk has been informative and that you're excited to see more of where WebAssembly and Lucid are heading. We're so extremely happy that the community has shown such interest in Lucid since we went open source, and we're hoping to build a long-term, sustainable community around it. So please check out Terrarium at wasm.fastlylabs.com and the Lucid repository at github.com slash fastly slash Lucid. And we've already fixed some pretty fantastic bugs that people have reported um, and have been adding new features that have helped them uh, uh, implement new WebAssembly backends for uh, different languages like Go and like Swift. And finally, uh, feel free to bother me personally on Twitter at ACFoltzer or just follow along for good cat pictures. All right, thank you very much.